Here's a screencast on periodic trends. We know that the periodic table displays um, all of the elements that occur both naturally and, and some that are man-made. And you can tell a lot about uh, an element based on its location on the periodic table. The trends that you'll see when we're traveling and we're navigating through the periodic table, you'll see that they're arranged according to groups or families. You'll see that they're designated based on their chemical characteristics that some are located in a certain way because they be behave chemically different than others. You'll see that periods, what period it in, is in tells you a lot. Um, size is a trend, electronegativity, reactivity, melting point, and density. So as we navigate through the periodic table, you're going to see trends in each of these categories. So let's switch over to our periodic table and we're going to see that as we navigate through, um, the trends should flesh out and we should be able to see uh, some pretty clear things that you might not have known about the periodic table. Um, for instance, if we look at the groups of the families, we have the groups and families going vertically on the periodic table. All right, This is group number one, number two. We skip these middle transition metals. We go over to group number three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, they're called groups or they're called families. Um, and, and the reason they're orientated the way they are, and we'll talk about the color coding later, is because of the number of valence electrons that they have. This first group or this first family is labeled with a Roman numeral one because it has one valence electron going all the way down. Hydrogen, you'll see it doesn't fit in. Hydrogen is a nonmetal. It should be over here. But the reason they put it in family number one is because it behaves chemically like the rest of these elements in family number one. So it's put here because of its one valence electron. If we move to the right, the beryllium family. This has two valence electrons. So these all behave very chemically similar because of that fact. We move across the transition metals to the boron family. Three valence electrons. Re recalling we have one, two. These are going to readily lose the one. This is going to readily lose that those two electrons. These will lose the three electrons in the boron family. The carbon family is a little bit different. It has four. Okay, So it's often going to share, going to form covalent bonds with these four valence electrons. The nitrogen family has five valence electrons, thus the Roman numeral five. Oxygen family, all of these with six. This group number seven because of its seven valence electrons and eight. Right here, these are the, this final family on the right have eight valence electrons, a full valence shell, if you will. The color coding tells you a lot. Uh, moving to bullet number two from the first slide, the designations. This group number one, with the exception of hydrogen, of course, these are the alkali metals. And you can see down here, here's all your color coding. Alkali metals, group number two are the alkaline earths. All right, you've got the transition metals in the middle. These are going to be your poor metals. Going along the stair step, we have metalloids, which are kind of metal, kind of not. Uh, the nonmetals here, of which hydrogen is one, but remember we put it down here because of that one valence electron. The halogens in group number seven, and finally the noble gases in group number eight. They're put where they are based on their chemical characteristics. All right, What do they physically look like? Uh, what is their phase? How do they react? That's why they are put where they are. And a lot of that is a function of their valence electron state. Do they have one? Do they have two? Or do they have eight? It shows about their reactivity. So those are all the vertical columns and what they tell you. What about the horizontal, the periods? This is period one, two, three, four, etc. The periods tell you the number of electron shells. <clears throat> Excuse me. This first period obviously has one electron shell with and, and, and hydrogen has one electron in it, helium has two electrons in it, it's full. Lithium has two electron shells, sodium has three, potassium in this whole period has four, 
rubidium in this whole period have five, etc. So going down each family, each time you go down, you're adding an electron shell. So that outer shell is moving outward from the nucleus, which is in the middle. And there's a lot of, of functionality that comes to that. There's a lot of ramifications for that. One thing is size, and that's another bullet. Hydrogen is the smallest member, or lithium is the smallest member of the alkali family. As we move down, francium is going to be much bigger because as you go down a period, you're adding an electron shell. So those valence electrons are farther out from the nucleus. So another trend besides the groups and families, besides the designations of alkali or alkaline earth, besides the periods 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is size. The trends you're going to see with size is as you go down the periodic table, size increases because, once again, the shells are being added. Electronegativity was another um, bullet that we had in the previous slide. Let me get my cursor out here. So, just to, just to remind you, for size, size increases as you go downward. So we have small to large. What about electronegativity? Remember that electronegativity is the affinity of an atom for electrons that it's sharing. We talk about covalent bonds as kind of a tug of war. All right, they're not they're not sharing the electrons as much as they're fighting over them. And the higher the electronegativity, the stronger the pull. Here's the trend. Starting from lower left and moving to upper right, electronegativity goes up. So it's low here, it's high up here. That's a function of size, if you think about it. If you think about down here, your valence electrons are way far out. Okay, they're in a seventh shell of electrons on the on out here, as opposed to being up towards the top. There's only uh, two shells of electrons. So the closer they are to the nucleus, the more they're affected by that electrostatic force. So remember, the nucleus is positively charged. The electrons are negatively charged. They're attracted to it. So the closer they are to the nucleus, the stronger that atom has a pull on its electrons. So the higher its electronegativity. So when we're way up here, right, there's only two electron shells. It's close to the nucleus. There's a greater pull on those electrons. So if it's going to be sharing them, that atom's going to have a very strong electronegativity. It's not going to want to give them up. Speaking of reactivity, where these, these elements are, whether they're here or whether they're here, says a lot about how reactive they are. We said that everyone in the alkali metal group has one valence electron. That makes them very reactive. Okay, They want to get rid of that one valence electron to find stability. The alkaline earth, same thing. They have two. They want to get rid of those two to find stability. Let's go over to the halogens. They have seven. They're stable if they have eight. So they're actively seeking out. Um, that eighth electron, they're going to be very reactive, just like these two groups. What about those in, in, in uh, group eight, the noble gases? They have eight, well, with the exception of helium, which has two, because its innermost shell is its outermost shell. It's stable. It has a full valence shell. So all of these in the noble gas group are inert. They are stable. They have a full valence shell. They're non-reactive. So reactivity... Um, you can tell a lot about where it is on the periodic table in terms of, of its reactivity. Two more. Melting point, easy. Melting point increases as you approach tungsten. Tungsten is right here. So as you approach tungsten from any direction, melting point goes up. So tungsten is a very high melting point. Density. Density, same thing. It increases, but as you approach osmium, which is right there. 
So to recap, we had the groups and the families, 1 through 8. We had designations such as the alkali metals and the noble gases. The periods, 1, 2, 3, going all the way down, adding electron shells. Size increasing, going down the periodic table. Electronegativity increasing as you go up and to the right. Reactivity, if you're an alkali or an alkaline earth or a halogen, you're going to be very reactive. Noble gas is not going to be. Melting point increases approaching tungsten, and density increases approaching osmium. And those are periodic trends.